they're totally writing a lot of this stuff for for their bros, for other bros that go through the same stuff that they've gone through. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mitch Plays Riffs. Here we break down what makes songs good, catchy, listenable. The artists that write those songs, why are they so talented? What do they do to differentiate themselves um, from the rest of the music in their genre and the things that they do to add longevity to their career? Uh, today we'll be covering a song by Dance Gavin Dance, a group that has been around for over 10 years and despite being in such an obscure music scene, Dance Gavin Dance has managed to be one of the most innovative bands of their genre what you would say metalcore, a genre that hit its peak around eight years ago. This band has continued to grow in its success and fan base. I am doing a series where I'm reviewing their latest album, Afterburner. You can catch that playlist somewhere on Audrey Hepburn. Uh, but for this video, I wanted to take a special one-off request from Bacon, the Bacon Pomeranian dog, who had requested a song called Pussy Vultures which kind of sounds like uh, some some dudes that kind of are going after some uh, some cats, like vultures. But anyways, uh, this was a request and I've never heard the song before. I will be reacting, but I will mainly moment by moment and gather my thoughts on what I am noticing about the songwriting, what kind of elements I see them referencing, maybe from different genres. Anyways, without further ado, let's jump into Pussy vultures. I'm loving this uh, old school KROQ vibe. Kind of like an old alternative 90s rock. Okay. Definitely nostalgic. Noticing there's a lot of different vibes going on here. I see the old 90s rock sound coming through Kind of like Foo Fighters-esque uh, The drums are very like indie rock pop I love the harmonies there. While the vibe is there, the mix seems very cluttered. Like there's a lot of drums going on and a lot of syllables in the speaking. You know, definitely could have benefited from dropping the mix, dropping the drums lower down in the mix so that the vocals were maybe more of the center of attention. I am seeing that this is a track from 2014, so I could definitely be being too hard on their mix right now, considering that most of their stuff that I enjoy is 2016 and on where they're production and editing is improved from this. It's still a good song, nonetheless, so far. Definitely. John's doing some sing screaming here. Something that kind of helps differentiate him as a screamer from other screamers of this genre. Hmm. I love the use of very heavy reverb in the guitar. Chamber space, like almost like concert hall-esque. It's actually an effect that you would use when you are trying to capture a nostalgic sound. The reason being is if you listen to a lot of old music from the 80s and earlier, it had a lot of space. Back when you were doing recordings, utilizing space was one of the few methods you had to add dimension to your music. Nowadays, because recordings can be done digitally and all these effects can be simulated, you can get all kinds of sounds um, at the touch of your fingertips from a computer. In regards to the vocals, I'm noticing these tracks are very raw. What I mean by raw is there's very little processing or autotune that I'm noticing on both Tillian and John Mess. Uh, 
his screams definitely sound a little bit more raw and inconsistent in a good way. Like, it's not overly compressed. That raw vibe that's going on the vocals is really adding to that nostalgic feel. That high pitched beep sound, they're doing a concept or a principle called blocking, which is creating a reoccurring reference point in music to create some sort of familiarity in the part. Even though you might not be interested in everything else in the music, you may or you may not. This recurring beeping sound creates a pattern that your brain is looking for. Kind of like ketchup, ketchup on everything. Back to the clean guitar now. And you notice here that Tillian is spacing out his singing now, so there's a lot less notes in his speaking. And the guitar has actually picked up the pace. So this is something that I've referenced before in our videos uh, called Signal to Noise, where in order to actually get everything across in music, you have a better chance of doing that when you don't have too much noise in the mix. And by that I mean, if your singing is full of syllables and a lot of uh, beats, and your guitar is full of beats, your brain can only, the mind can only differentiate so much. Um, so we are noticing here that um, in contrast to the very beginning where the guitars were very noty Tillian's voice is very noty. The drums are very heavy on the snare. It was almost very busy. And now that we've come to this point in the song, uh, I, I'm even noticing that it's a lot more clear and it feels a lot more polished at this point in the story. <laughs> drums are picking it up. Now we're getting some more cymbals in. change. It's very progressive here. It's not falling into a very noticeable structure. It seems that this whole song is going in one direction. It almost feels like a kind of like some 70s rock bands that when you went to see them live they were literally just creating a song as they went. That's the vibe I'm getting from this music and the way the song is structured it's it helps support that vibe. You know, that's one of the things that really separates Dance Kevin Dance from many other bands that I listen to in this genre. Really cohesive about leveraging different elements of guitar tone, production, effects in the mix, and songwriting to really be cohesive with the story they're trying to tell or the theme they're trying to set. This is the climax of the song, I'm guessing. The drums are definitely going the fastest here. Tillian is singing very big and open to balance that out. The 
classic Kara Q build up. Definitely getting Silver Sun pickup vibes here. Vultures are coming for your girlfriend after you break up. Okay, so that's what that song's about. We need some space in this chorus. Hmm. This must be the post chorus. bad of a song. Uh, it had a very unique vibe. Very unique vibe to this one that I haven't heard DDG do. Maybe the one other song that they that had this vibe I could think of was off of Afterburner Parallels. Yeah, Parallels. They did a very good job capturing the nostalgia. I felt it was very busy in the beginning, um, but other than that, the rest of it was very well-structured, well-written. I love the direction that they went with the song. Um, not too repetitive. I, th I think the chorus may have came twice. I'm kind of curious to what the, see the lyric, what the lyrics are about to go with this vibe that they are setting with the song. Nostalgia, we used to lose ourselves in conversation. Nothing was final. We used to brace ourselves for separation. From time to time, I'd find myself wondering what could be. If I'd never been to hell before, I'd built a show. Dang. That's super deep. What would it be like if you had... Ever been to hell before you built a shell? Basically, uh, toughened up. Or... Toughened up from your emotions. The chorus... The pussy vultures are coming for your girlfriend after you break up. They listen to her sad story that slip it in when she's vulnerable. Don't think it won't happen to you. My best friend said, hey, hey John, screw you. Now I'm confused. I don't know what to do. So don't think it won't happen. It won't happen to you. Like Dr. Seuss about post breakups with your girlfriend. Words of wisdom here from Dance Game and Dance. We used to lose ourselves in conversation. Hmm. And then we got some lyrics on the ending. You can't send a postcard from the future to the past. You can't send the postcard from the future to the past. You can't warn your own self. Let these memories fade too fast. And when it's over, you can't recreate the past. My mind is an ocean. Wish I built a bigger raft. So another thing I really like about this band is it's very it's very introspective. It's it's almost like it's almost like you get to when you're listening to Dance Kevin Dance, you get to read your own journal. Because they're writing about stuff that most let's face it, I'm looking at the data, most of us are dudes. They're totally writing a lot of this stuff for 
for their bros, for other bros that go through the same stuff that they've gone through. Well, definitely a lot of bro moments I get when I read these lyrics. Um, when I read any of their lyrics from their, uh, from all their albums. Anyways, that's my quick reaction slash analysis to Pussy Vultures. Um, leave a comment below about anything that you liked or didn't like. If there's a particular song you want me to analyze or any lyrics you want me to analyze from Dance Game and Dance or any other band, drop a comment. If you made it this far into the video, thanks for sticking around. Keep watching these videos. I will do my best to expand your horizon and change the way you think about music, add some more dimension to it. If you have watched a few of my videos already on this channel, let me know. Are you remembering or noticing some of the concepts I've talked about when you're listening to music uh, in terms of songwriting, production? Are you noticing the clever ways your favorite bands are transitioning from part to part in their songs? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Again, thanks for sticking around, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Beep, beep, beep.